Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, guys, it is once again primary day, and uh, I'm highlighting a couple of fascinating races that are on the ballot, and I think kind of tell the tale of the GOP past, present, and future. So you've got Liz Cheney in Wyoming and Sarah Palin up in Alaska. And if the polls are to be believed, Cheney, the daughter of the former vice president and one-time former heir apparent to the neocon crown, she's set to be defeated in pretty stunning fashion. Punished not for the terrible ideology that she still holds tight to, but because of arguably the most honorable thing she's actually done since arriving on the political scene. Then you got Sarah Palin. She's on the ballot in a special election to fill the House seat of Don Young, who died in office. Now, Palin was actually the top vote getter in the open primary to fill that seat. And now she's up against two other candidates, one Republican and one Democrat, to try to close the deal. The rise and fall and potential rise again of these two women says a lot about where we stand with the Republican Party right now. Just take a look at the closing pitch for each. After enlisting her father to record a viral ad calling Donald Trump a coward and saying there's never been an individual who is a greater threat to our republic than Trump, I can think of a couple, one in particular, Cheney is now closing out her campaign with this message. As election day nears, I want to talk to citizens across our great state and all across our country. America cannot remain free if we abandon the truth. The lie that the 2020 presidential election was stolen is insidious. It preys on those who love their country. It is a door Donald Trump opened to manipulate Americans to abandon their principles, to sacrifice their freedom, to justify violence, to ignore the rulings of our courts and the rule of law. This is Donald Trump's legacy, but it cannot be the future of our nation. So her continued unapologetic Trump opposition in a Republican primary in a state that he won overwhelmingly is basically an acknowledgement that this race is already over. And Liz Cheney is looking towards her next act, maybe as a lobbyist or potentially as a talking head. Her near certain defeat is exhibit number, let's say three million, that this is in fact Trump's GOP. The fact that she voted with him on nearly everything and is conservative on just about everything doesn't matter at all. She's on the wrong side of the only dividing line in the GOP that actually counts, and that is her views on Donald J. Trump. The fact that she has such high approval ratings with Democrats tells you that the Donald Trump dividing line has become nearly the only thing that matters in all of politics, not just with the Republican base. Now, up in Alaska, Sarah Palin is trying to recapture her mama bear magic. Here's some throwback content that she is still posting to this day on her Twitter timeline, giving a little shout out to all of the uh, hockey moms out there on National Lipstick Day. And here's a taste of her recent CPAC appearance. What are you calling him these days? <laughs> yeah, well, he's sleepy, Joe. Pretty <laughs> sleepy, kind of slow, bless his heart. Um, yeah, that was, that was quite an experience, and uh, man, had I to do it all over again, I would not hold back. It's, it's a shame that the McCain-Palin campaign kind of had some shackles on me, not allowed to go rogue, because that's what our country needs right now, are fighters who are willing to go rogue and get out there and fight for what's right to save our country, because you all know, y'all know, the trajectory that our country is on right now, not real good, but we can turn that around. In case you were wondering, she also relives the whole hockey mom pit bull lipstick thing in that interview there as well. It's kind of weird, and it's honestly kind of sad to watch Sarah Palin now. Her vibes are exactly that of the guy who peaked as high school quarterback and is constantly trying to relive the glory days. When I was preparing this monologue, acquainting myself with Palin's current rhetoric, I actually expected to be kind of floored by some really wild wing nut type of stuff. <laughs> and I ended up being a little bit surprised at how tame she seems now compared to the new MAGA stars, people like Matt Gates or Paul Gosar or Marjorie Taylor Greene. Palin was kind of a precursor to this type of politics, a canary in the coal mine of the rise of Trumpism. John McCain wasn't really willing to directly scratch the itch of the Republican base, but Palin was. She leaned into trashing the media. She coined the drill baby drill line as a kind of rallying cry before Trump leaned in to build that wall. She dabbled in the very same birther conspiracies that helped raise Trump's esteem with the GOP base too. But now she's caught in a bit of an odd spot. She's still a polarizing figure, nationally because of her infamous vice presidential run, and in Alaska because she abruptly quit as that state's governor. 
Yeah, because she isn't quite as wild as the new crop of Republican political characters, she doesn't inspire fully ecstatic and committed support either. As a result, Palin has struggled with fundraising in her campaign. She appears to be locked in a pretty tough battle in her spe special election in spite of her top finish in the initial round. And that's another thing that's a challenge for Palin here. Alaska's new ranked choice system means that she's got to be the top choice for a lot of voters, but she's also got to be the second choice for a lot of voters, too. And that makes it more difficult for a polarizing candidate such as herself. Voters are likely to either have her as their top pick or want absolutely nothing to do with her. That makes it tough in ranked choice voting. So two figures connected to the GOP pass, one from the George W. Bush era, one from the early stirrings of Trumpism, one a almost certain goner, the other trying to regain her footing in the political era that she helped to birth. The irony is that in terms of how they would actually vote in Congress, they're probably nearly identical. <laughs> but policy is completely irrelevant in these contests so long as Trump continues to be at the center of everything. And Sagar, there's one other um, really interesting race on the Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.